Here we are. Hey, good morning, all. Welcome to November. Hi, Bob Bando. Hi, Judy Hatch. Good morning, Carrie. Hi, Ken Woods. It's Tuesday. So Wednesday's hump day. What's Tuesday? Tough Tuesday. Called Tough Tuesday. But it is November 1st of 2022. And we've actually got some beautiful weather. We had some rain and now we got some great fall days coming. Like, I think through Thursday. So uh, that's right here in Southeast Michigan. Wherever you're watching or listening. It might be a little different. Your mileage might vary. But uh, we uh, very, very much... Uh, appreciate uh, some uh, warmer weather so that we can kind of slide into fall. How's that? So, Norma Bentley, good morning to you. Hi, Robin Allen. Hi, Barbara Wolf. So, we are waiting on just a few people. Not too many people here today yet. 12, 12 devices. That's good. Hi, Don Jones. I did. Yeah, I've seen that before. They're actually, um, there's a way of doing that. A kit you can buy. It looks very nice, though. Hi, Linda Wolf. And Judy Martin. And Judy Martin reminds us, and I was going to talk about this as soon as we get some people in, it is All Saints Day, which is the day after Halloween. And, uh, so um, there's actually, believe it or not, uh, if we want to go back and take a look at, at uh, the way that it's been celebrated throughout the years, um, there was actually a series of days that would be celebrations, the uh, Halloween, um, and then uh, we have All Saints Day. And Saints was a, a, originally, originally was all this people who had been elevated to sainthood uh, it was there. It's kind of been broadened, if you remember, um, what we consider to be all believers of all time who are past. And then it's followed by the next day, November 2nd, which is All Souls Day, which was for all people who died. But over the years, uh, and through different cultures, it's taken on. Like if we look at Mexico, they have Dia de Muertes, Muertos, 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 the Day of the Dead. And that is actually a four-day celebration. That's kind of where it goes the longest. Um, but uh, we've kind of just said Halloween. We've made that very secular, um, probably as we should when we consider some of the gruesomeness that's come in. And then we also turn around and uh, um, we also uh, turn around and, and celebrate all saints, where we, we make sure it, we celebrate everybody. So anyway, that's kind of what it's here. So we got some more people coming in. Uh, we've got Helen England, Joanne Butters. Good to see you. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, we are. So it is. Thank. It's it's November, which also means it's Thanksgiving week. And there's a lot of people that take thank November and they they post on social media every day of November something to be thankful for. So it's thankful November uh, and. Uh, so I will um, say that maybe I'll do it while we're here, obviously Monday through Thursday, but just take a moment to think about what you're thankful for every day, right? And I'm going to tell you what I'm thankful for. One of my spiritual disciplines is that I try, I don't do it every day, but I try as I'm just uh, unloading for the day, everything's done, the day is done, and um, um, usually as I'm in washing up, brushing my teeth, I try to give thanks for something that happened that day, um, and uh, so what? I, but so I'll. Uh, but I, what I was remembering last night as I did that was this, right? Um, I'm thankful for good friends, right? Good friends who speak the truth. And I'm not saying that I have friends that don't speak the truth, but I, when I say speak the truth, that they're not afraid uh, uh, to come to me. And say, hey, I noticed something, right? A, a, a gentle corrections, right? I, I love that. Um, 
it's, it's part of friendship. It's can't, uh, so anyway, so uh, that's what I was thankful for. Good friends who speak the truth. All right, I see Barbara Wolf says she's thankful for God's mercy. Absolutely, absolutely. Hi, Kip. Yeah, you are a little late. You're usually the first, if not, you know, usually the first, but it's right there. And uh, Judy Martin is putting up a prayer request for her friend Liz and her family. And uh, Liz's dad passed. So, yeah, we will we'll remember that. Hi, Joan Riggs. How are you? So, the other thing. Uh, hi, Helen England. And uh, so, the other thing I wanted everybody uh, to uh, was here. Wait a second. Oh, so how much candy do you have left? I got an incredible amount of candy. We got about 12 trick-or-treaters, and I had 500 pieces of candy. It's at the church now. It's at the church. So it was a slow, for us, it was a slow Halloween. And uh, I think it's because, number one, it was raining. It was on a Monday. Uh, and I think that there were so many Halloween events for kids to get candy throughout, starting on that, that whole weekend. I think that that's kind of what happened. So anyway, I hope that you had a good Halloween. And that you got all tricks. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, all treats. All treats and no tricks. Hi, Robin Allen. Okay. So we're going to move on since it's 9.05, 9.06. Ooh, I went on for a little bit too long there. We're going to go over and do our devotions today, which is a, the 1st of November. I'm going to do my breathing exercise. I'll breathe in for five, hold it for five, exhale for five, get all the clutter of the day. Just... I'm not going to forget. I'm just going to set it off to the side, and I'm going to concentrate on God's Word for us. And, and if you'd like to join me, I welcome you. Here we go. Are you ready? Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. I know it's always a count of five. Sometimes it's a long count. Sometimes it's a short count. So, our opening devotion for today is psalm 42 oh before we do that news stuff remember if you're on the deacons deacons meeting via zoom tonight 7 p.m so if you are a deacon or participate on that uh look look for that right look for that uh a reopening committee will be meeting uh via zoom on wednesday just kind of looking we're not we're not talking about putting any additional restrictions into place we're, we're talking about how do we just do we just remove all restrictions at this point for COVID? And then uh, we have a finance committee Thursday afternoon. So if you're on finance, there you go. That's all the stuff going on. Of course, Thursday also is our grief share group. Lots and lots of stuff going on. All right, but let's get to devotions. Our opening scripture for today is Psalm 42. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. As a deer longs for flowing streams. So my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night. While people say to me continually, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God, with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me, before I remember you from the land of Jordan and Hermon, from Mount Mizar, deep, called the deep, of the thunder of your cataracts. All your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk about mournfully because the enemy oppresses me? As with a deadly wound in my body, my adversaries taunt me, while they say to me continually, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help, my God. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. Well, thanks be to God. We're going to continue on with our prophetic reading out of this minor prophet, Zephaniah. Don't read him much, right? And um, 
So last we heard about the coming judgment for Jerusalem um, and God's uh, biggest um, biggest complaint of their sin is the fact that uh, all of his people, some of them have risen into powerful positions, either through uh, government or through riches, and that they've taken on the religious characteristics of other countries, right? Dressed like them, but uh, not only their cultural things, but their religious things too. And also many of them have become completely agnostic about the presence of God. So here we go. Let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior, the warrior, I'm sorry, the warrior cries aloud there. That day shall, will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed for a full but terrible end. He will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. Very apocalyptic, right? Apocalyptic definition of that is uh, the disorder or the reorder of, of uh, the way things work. Uh, in, in, from a theological standpoint, we say that this is the breaking in of God uh, into the natural order. Uh, that God created himself, but he upsets that order. through. And uh, so, so here's our question. Was Zephaniah uh, talking about the coming fall of the southern kingdom, of Judah, which was going to happen? Or was he looking, peering further into the future? And uh, so maybe talking about like this day of reckoning that we see in Revelation that we're going to read right now. So Revelation chapter 14, verse 14 through 15, 8. All right, this one goes on for a little bit. So this is uh, John the Revelator, not the same as John the Gospel writer, who we also know as John the Evangelist, versus John the Baptist, who is another person altogether. But his vision of the coming joining of the kingdom of heaven and earth, which are promised, Right? But all of the events that lead up to it, the portents, and also as it rolls out, what it looks like. So, let's listen for the word of the Lord. Then I looked, and there was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like the Son of Man, with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Another angel came out of the temple, calling with a loud voice to the one who sat on the cloud, Use your sickle and reap. For the hour to reap has come, because the harvest of the earth is fully ripe. So the one who sat on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was reaped. Then another angel came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. Then another angel came out from the altar, the angel who had authority over fire. And he called with a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle, Use your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for its grapes are ripe. So the angel swung his sickle over the earth and gathered the vintage of the earth, and he threw it into the great winepress of the, of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden outside the city, and blood flowed from the winepress as high as a horse's bridle for a distance of about 200 miles. Then I saw another portent of heaven, great and amazing, seven angels with seven plagues, which are the last, for with them the wrath of God is ended. And I saw what appeared to be a sea of glass mixed with fire, and those who had conquered the beast and its image and the number of its name 
standing beside the sea of glass with harps of God in their hands. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Great and amazing are your deeds, Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the nations. Lord, who will not fear and glorify your name? For your, you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your judgments have been revealed. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So the final judgments, as we say, are coming. We're seeing there some evidence of people who, uh, on this day of the beast, right, stood up to them and their reward that they're standing uh, at the end of the day with harps of God. Okay. Um, a lot of uh, agricultural stuff um, going on, you know, talking about the, the reaping of the harvest and this reaping of the grapes um, and then the purifying of it. Right, pressing of it. All right, let's move on to Luke. How about that? Luke chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. So, um, this is pretty self explanatory. I'm just going to go into it. Here we go. At that very time, there was some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, Do you think? that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans. No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell upon them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So the fig tree, I, I talked about this during the children's survey a couple weeks ago. Because we have a fig tree that's inside. We're waiting on those figs. Um, but this is the, the one of the references to fig trees in the Bible. But it follows the story about something that happened, a historical thing that happened that, that uh, we struggle to find any counts of it, but could have, you know, because... Things happened back then, and it's talking about things that happened, right? Um, so Pilate, the Roman governor, um, had apparently, you know, they, they would, um, troublemakers. Rome just didn't want any troublemakers. So they would, you know, they would beat them and kill them and, and things like that. So this apparently happened. Uh, this was, and, and the Jewish people would uprise either in small ways or big ways, against the Roman. They did it again in 66 AD, following Christ. Uh, and that led to the destruction of the temple. But um, here we are. Um, that So we believe that it happened in the area of the temple and the fact that they had sacrificial. And then Pilate came in and had his soldiers kill some folks, or the soldiers killed folks. And, the, and that blood of the sacrifices that they were giving were mingled in with these Galileans. And um, the same way that it says that there was a, uh, a tower that fell and killed 18. Jesus' question is, is, hey, look, do you think that this was God's wrath, that these were the only people who sinned? Right? Or this is just something we live with, right? Um, but it talks about the importance of repentance. And then he follows that immediately with this teaching. So I think that this is really neat to have this, these two hand in hand. And Probably, the, you know, why Luke tells us this way. Talks about what happens if you don't repent, right? Because it's just death, right? But then it talks about this repentance and also the fact that God never gives up on us. Because here's a, a lowly fig tree. It's been there three years. Nothing's, nothing, no fruit has grown on it. And the person who owns it says, this is worthless. Get it out of here. I, I only want things in my garden that produce. And the gardener, this intermediary, says, you know what? 
let me let me try. I'm going to dig the old soil around it. I'm going to put good soil on it. I'm going to put fertilizer on it. And then give it a year, and let's see what happens then. So if God passes judgment, right, for our actions, Jesus is an intermediary for us to say uh, this, how, how to fix that, how to repent and to return to it. So I think that those two stories, just back to back, right, just one right after the other, is just as important as the lessons that are in each one of them, right? What do you think? What do you think? Okay. We need to go back up here. And... Oh, I need to I need to write some stuff down here. So we need to pray for Liz and her family and the death of her. Go back. You had 500 people. Good for you. Five hundred. Hi, Mark. Hi, join Steve Yambor. Hi, Barbara Shoot. Hope you're doing well. Robin Allen. She would like prayers for her cousin in law, Kim. She passed away. So prayers for Kim's family. Absolutely. Barb is asking questions about the fig tree that I don't have any answers for. The answer is, is that there's figs on it, right? And they continue to grow. So we're hopeful. We're hopeful. We haven't put in any dung on it, but we're hopeful. Thank you, Norma. Hi, Sandy Sauerbeck. And prayers for Becky also. Okay. All right. We will lift all those people up in prayer. The other thing, it is with sadness in our hearts, but hope in the resurrection at 101 years old. Eileen Shade passed away yesterday. So um, just a, an amazing woman of, of uh, faith and the church um, was talking with her daughter Candy yesterday. There will be a service uh, which will be held um, on Monday here at the church at 11 a.m. The body will lay in state from 10 until the time of the service, and then a service at 11. Uh, and she will also, there will also be visitation at Weiss Funeral Home on Sunday evening, too. So 101 years old. So um, blessed life. But we want to lift up uh, her son and daughter and their families, right, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in prayer also. Okay. Let us pray. Heavenly Lord. There's so much on our mind as we enter into this day. First of all, we want to give you thanks for the day that we find ourselves in, the people that we're with, your scripture and your word. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. Just ask that it will rest on us and will live, guide us. And Lord, as we gather here today, we're hearing um, uh, families who are in grief over the loss of loved ones. So we pray for Kim's family. And uh, we pray for Liz. Uh, Liz's family and uh, Lord we pray for the Shade family all of these people Lord um, we need the hope of the resurrection in our lives and uh, as we go through our grief we need to be able to process it and to put things into proper order so our mind Lord can rest easy uh, or easier Lord the one thing that helps us with that is the promise of the resurrection that we will see our friends and family again and we do lift up all people who are actively grieving right now and pray for them peace and comfort we also want to lift up becky uh, england as she continues to heal we ask for healing for all we lift up barbara shoot we uh, uh we we pray for um we play for butch brunell lord all of these people uh, we just uh they're in the process of healing and we just pray that uh, their healing will be complete. And we know that sometimes we get impatient because we think things should go faster. So, Lord, we need your gift of patience so that we can wait on your time, your seasons. So, Lord, uh, it is a beautiful day. 
and uh, we promise on our part to do our best so that we, our faith can grow wider and deeper in all that we do today. Lord, you will unveil miracles before us if we just open our eyes and our ears and our hearts. So as we go about this day, be with us. We ask all of this in your name. Amen. Amen, all. God bless. I love you all. God loves you. We all love you here at Allen Park Presbyterian Church. Let us show you how. And uh, if there's anything we can do for you, please reach out. Okay. God bless you all. We will see you. Have a great day in the Lord. And we'll see you right here tomorrow at 9 a.m. Bye-bye.